Before we do these exercises, let's just review our four new theorems. Now, if you click on that link over there, um, you can see them explained in more detail along with proofs. But right now, we're just talking about them. Theorem 8.3 tells us that these opposite sides are congruent. Theorem, given a parallelogram, that is. Theorem 8.4 says that the opposite angles, the two blue are congruent, the two red are congruent. 8.5 tells me that one blue and one red add up to 180. And 8.6 tells me that these diagonals bisect each other. In other words, the red and the blue cut each other in half, and that makes M a midpoint of both. Now, let's get to work. Well, here we go with parallelogram PQRS. And I've highlighted the RS in red because they're adjacent. Well, that means they're consecutive angles, and we know something about them. Theorem 8.5 tells us that in a parallelogram, those consecutive angles must be supplementary. And given that R is 24 more, that means I'll set up the equation this way, set angle S equal to X, and angle R is X plus 24. Solving for X, that gives me the measure of angle, let me see, S, right? Then we substitute for the measure of angle R, which is 102, and we can draw the picture. And it looks like that. Keep in mind, we don't really know anything about the sides. We don't know what the aspect ratio of this figure is, but I've got 102, and of course the opposite angles are congruent, and I've got a pair of 78s and a, and a pair of 102 degree angles. That's your picture. Well, here we go with diagonals, color-coded to make it easier, using our theorem 8.6. Well, for x, let's set the blue equal to magenta. There you go. x is 4. This is pretty easy. Set green equal to orange. And y is 4. Well done. Well, let's see if we can find the coordinates of this midpoint, m. Should be pretty easy. After all, we do know from theorem 8.6 that this midpoint, or these, should say these two diagonals, the red and the blue, bisect each other. So M is the midpoint of the red and of the blue. If I look at the blue coordinates for the blue diagonal, I could find the midpoint there, but I'd rather do this, because honestly the red one's a lot easier. I know a formula here, but why bother with a formula? Just look at this. Look at this red diagonal. Look at the x's from 0 to 2. What's in the middle of 0 and 2? Well, that would be 1. That's what an average is with two numbers. What's in the middle of vertically from 0 to 5? That's the y value, the ordinate. That would be 2 and a half, or as we express, 5 halves. So it looks like we're right there. The answer is A. Well, here we go. We're talking about a parallelogram with one angle 50 degrees more than four times the measure of another. That must be making use of the consecutive angles, which are supplementary. After all, opposite angles are congruent. So I'm going to let angle 1 equal x. This is the most important thing, the assignment. Well, angle 2 has to be 4x plus 50. Well, let's move this out of the way. And now we can say, here's an equation. These two angles, angle 1 and 2, are equal to 180. They're supplementary. I'll perform the substitution, and I'll simplify, and I'll solve for x. Well, that's well, that 26. That's going to give me the measure of angle 1. I can substitute back into the expression for angle 2, and I know the, the measure of angle 2 and this is what my figure looks like, just like that. Could have a few different shapes, but right there, angles 1 and 2, 26 and 154. Well, here we have two parallelograms, this one and this one. And our first job, let's start here with y. I'm going to find the measure of this angle. And for that, all we need is this parallelogram, and this theorem. So after all, this 40 degree angle and 
this other angle, that would be TSV, which consists of Y plus 80, they must all add up to 180 degrees. So I've got 80 here and 40 here. I need 60 more. So now 40, 60, 100, 180. That'll take us through this part. Well, that was pretty easy. Let's look at the second part of this. How about finding this side? Well, again, we've got two parallelograms here and here. So imagine QR is congruent to TS, but then TS is also congruent to UV, just like the old transitive property. So this segment UV must also be equal to 20. So X is 20. Let's find the perimeter of this parallelogram. Hmm. Well, I suppose we first need to sketch one. There you go. See, I, I went from a text description into a picture. Now I can see it. I've got the vertices in the right order. Now I can take these variable expressions and assign them to the right position. Now remember, I don't really know what shape this is, but I just know it's a parallelogram. And I know now the relative position. NP is opposite MQ. And QP is down here, opposite MN. Let's make use of theorem A3, which tells us these opposites are congruent. So let's set the blue equal to each other. And when I do that, set these two expressions equal to each other, and I'm going to solve for x. x will be 14. Well, of course, now I can evaluate this expression at x equals 14. Negative 2 times 14 plus 37, a little easier here. 14 minus 5, we all know that's 9. So let's get these out of here and replace it with this. So again, I've replaced, I've solved for x and substituted back into each expression. Let's go for the purple sides now. And let's see. I'll set these two expressions equal to each other. y equals 3. Well, 4 3's, 12 plus 5 is 17. Oh, 3 plus 14 is 17. So I can replace these two expressions now with 17. Oh, we're all just about there. Let's just add up the sides. Or we could say 2 times the semi-perimeter. No matter how you do it, you're adding up all four of these, and your perimeter is 52. So why can't this be a parallelogram? Let's find out. I'm starting with angle B here, 124 degrees. Now, let's put in, now let's say, a 66 degree at angle at angle A, right there. And I'll trim this line a little bit there. Well, I've got the makings of a quadrilateral, but I've already got a problem. These two add up to more than 180. Consecutive angles, they're going to have to be supplementary. So it's already not going to be a parallelogram. But let's have, let's go a little farther. Let's make this 124 degree angle here. And then we'll just say point D must be this intersection. So there's our figure. And, um, you know, it just doesn't look anything like a parallelogram. These two angles don't add up to 180 and neither do these. So, not even close. Oh, and these two would have to be congruent, and they're not.